yeah. It's the bubbleless bubble, just like it's the gateless gate, right? Yeah, yeah. The veilless veil, the gateless gate. Yeah. Wow. Gosh, that's such a fascinating. Thing yeah, that, yeah, it is. Is and because it comes right back to what you were talking about with the simultaneous. Yeah. Hey everyone, welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Atlas. I'm super pumped for this episode. We are going to be talking about non duality and awakeness. We have Fred Davis joining us on the show. Hi, Fred. Hello, Atlas. Thank you for having me. <clears throat> so I'm much excited for to be here. On. Me too. I'm so, so excited for this conversation. I've been a huge fan and it's been uh, great. Yeah. It's been great to be able to take in all of the different ways that you're pointing to the one end from the different faces of the mountain. And yeah, that's been an analogy that we've been using a lot on our, on our show as well. And it's helpful because we sort of get one of the ways aspects of the pointing from one of the pieces of video or books and then we get another one from another pieces of video or books. And then that's sort of for each of us is our own unique style of that finding or awakeness of that diamond necklace that's already around our neck. Right. Yeah. So uh, for those that don't know, uh, Fred Davis is a non-dual spiritual unteacher, five-time author, creator of the living method of spiritual awakening and awakeningclaritynow.com. And you can find that link in the bio below, as well as his Amazon author page and his YouTube page, which has a lot of great free content. Fred, let's start off with this. This has been something interesting for me that I'm really looking forward to hearing how you feel about. So this idea of true simultaneity being something like in the most layered approach to this, we can say that there's the non-duality, there's the ineffable. Mm -hmm. And it just is. And it's this appearance happening. Mm -hmm. Cool. And then there's another layer. And that's like the dualistic concession, mm -hmm. which is something like there's suffering and there's well-being. And we should eradicate as much planetary suffering and maximize planetary abundance and well-being and flourishing and prosperity and whatnot. So I'm curious, there's 8 billion yeah. of us, and each of us are going through our own unique sort of piercing the veil, God realization to yeah. that diamond necklace around our neck. And so if we hold all 8 billion perspectives simultaneously in that range of where people are at in this sort of spectrum, how, how do you take in an idea like that true simultaneity of holding all of this at once? Well, it's the, obviously it's not a character's uh, ability to do so. What the same thing that's looking through these eyes is the same thing that's looking through those eyes. You just met my wife, Betsy, and it's the same thing that's looking through her eyes. And I just heard, heard my dog, Willie, barking, and it's the same thing that's looking through his eyes simultaneously. Yes. Now, I uh, remember one time I had a session with somebody, and I happened to say, you are the salmon swimming upstream. I just came out, and he said, I can't see the salmon. I can't see his, why can't I see is the salmon? <laughs> <laughs> why can't I see as Willie? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Why can't I see as Willie? And uh, I said, well, you can see what's going on, just like you can see what's going on behind the, the, the camera in this room and all that. And I said, but you're just not using that unit to do it. You're using this one to do it. And you're using, you are using the fish to see as the fish, but all of that is coming to you. Now, what we hit here is we hit something that just jumps right on past, right on past logic. Because what we're really talking, even the 8 billion, we can't, we, we, there's no way the mind can really get 8 billion. 
uh, and then <clears throat> we look at the universe and we see that <clears throat> it is, it's either limitless or expanding, depending on which scientist you talk, or both, I guess, depending on which scientist you talk to, whatever. The idea is these little things in our head, right? These, these brains, I use this to show them. Mm -hmm. What you got here is you got three pounds, but you got the most arrogant three pounds. <laughs> Because that little piece of finity actually believes that it can encompass infinity. Mm. And it can't hold infinity, which is what it's always trying to do. It can only use that brain to behold infinity. Mm. And it's quite a difference. So it's not a matter of understanding this. But I'm, I always tell people I'm not the answer guy. I'm the question guy. And that people will say, Fred, would you please explain that to me? And I, I just I will have, you know, paid some money to talk to me. And I know it's very disappointing when I tell them, well, I can't explain you because I don't understand it. But that's the truth. I don't understand. You can't put this together. I get it. I know that, that I am this. I know that this is not, uh, that, that, that I know that I am not other than this, but I also know I'm not limited to this. And I'm certainly not limited to one of these, but that has been the programming is, you know, right, right. Our, our parents begin to train us. Fred, mama, Fred, daddy, Fred, Fred's room. And we go on and on. The brainwashing goes on and we finally somewhere between 18 months and three years we we entered that agreement we entered that lie yeah this is actually the an, a key topic that i've listed as well that i want to talk about what you just said there was really resonant that the this 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 it's okay three, to laugh the, the, it's just, you i know not, it's the cosmic joke it is i know it's leela right the divine play that's it, that's it right uh, exactly. yeah the the three pounds the most egoic three pounds it's so funny yeah the, that's arrogant yeah the arrogant arrogant yeah arrogant three pounds it's so funny and there's this there's this there's this impulse it's like to to go in all the way to our source and to know that and to have that be although at this non-dual level it's this ineffable mystery at the same times there's this seeking impulse to be like hold all of infinity at once but it is just this it's the beholding of this expression of that, that is the sort of, it's like in the eye, it's the, you know, the, the, like you were saying, it's the one observer and the, that's shared among us. And, and that the pupil, the pupil itself is that shared component. And then the iris is the unique coloration of that expression, mm. the appearance of the ex expression. And so maybe before we get into some of that youthful stuff, how does the, how do these like kind of you childlike explain like I'm five analogies, how do they resonate when we say like the pupil is like the eye of God and the iris is like the unique coloration or. Well, I don't actually talk about that. So it's, it, it would be, but I can explain my view of that. Yes. And, yeah. Is, and my view of things is you were talking about the, the, the necklace around our necks, but it, you, you probably know the story of Andrew's net. And just in case anybody out there doesn't, let me tell it very quickly. So Indra is the, the, is the head of all the of Hindu th theology, uh, uh, mythology. It's, he's the king god, if you will. And the, Indra was there before anything was there. And, um, 
Indra had a necklace like you're talking about mm -hmm. and uh, or he had and he took it and we had, had a net that was like a bunch of necklaces together and he took that net and he flung it out into the void and when he did the, all the stars appeared mm -hmm. and in the that's the way it looks from here but from the net's view what you see is that there's a net and at every juncture of the of a net like a fishing net right yep, and at yep. every juncture of that fishing net there's a jewel yes exactly just and like then, just like alex gray's net of being his visual that he has i'll i'll embed that here for for people okay um, it's it's super and i'll also send it to you it's it's a really right. good visualization of what good. we're describing right. yeah yeah good yeah i have some visuals I have some artist renderings of something approaching that idea here in my desk that I show people sometimes. So the, the thing is, is that when we look, what we want to do is we want to look at every jewel. What can, what is it that every jewel can see? Mm. And what I'm going to suggest that every jewel, that each jewel, it sees, it can see every other jewel but it can't see itself. Mm. The, eye, the eye can't see itself. And there's a, so each one of these jewels has a zillion reflections, but nowhere within any, in any of these jewels is there a center thing. Is there, is there anything in the middle? It's the jewel itself, meaning that this happening, this is the jewel, right? Yep. And I can't actually find <clears throat> I like to report, I'm very conservative in what I report, outlandish too, but um, what I can re truthfully report to you, I can't really tell you that I am, I can't tell you I'm not, but it's, that's really out of my pay grade. What I can tell you is that there's a sense of being here, mm -hmm. that much I can report. Yeah. Whatever it is that's saying I, yeah. I don't know, it's lost in the loop, but there is a, there is a sense of being here. Yeah. And but what I've noticed in my inquiries is that the sense of something doesn't necessarily equate with the truth of something. In other words, I had a, I had a sense this morning it was going to rain like crazy and it's dry as a bone out there. So that's a wasted sense. And, and it's a sense that, that did not indicate anything that was true, but it was the sense. And what I'm saying is that there's a sense of being, but that's not the same thing as stating I am, or there is being, or whatever. there's a sense of being, that's it. That's as far as we can go down that path. That is the, that, that mm -hmm. sense of being is the last thing we see prior, it's the first thing we see out of the non-dual gate, and it's the last thing we see in the non-dual gate. In the as we move back and forth between those two, I am is thought to be that, but I'm saying there's something deeper and more primal than I am, which yep. is the sense of being. And there's something below that sense of being, but I have no idea what. It's it's it, it, I want to know it. Well, what I can know is that I'm it. I can't. I know I can't not be it. Yep. But I can't know it from afar because there's only it. It can't, it's like oneness, looking for oneness, which is what everybody's doing in the seeking community, right? Oneness is looking for, I can't wait to merge with oneness. Yeah, the fish in, is in the ocean, yeah. That's it, yeah. yeah. Right, exactly. So what is there outside of oneness that could merge with oneness? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It, <clears throat> I like how you bring in this really important visualization of this this net of being and how you also mentioned this this just sense of of presence this that simply is this happening now in that visualization, it's really profound where we see 
that every single one of those in the net, every single one of those intersecting points is the diamond that is around each of our necks. Right. And then that, that source light shines through that unique diamond and, and refracts as a unique color combination in that, in that iris. And so that's, yeah. And so I'm not, I'm not agreeing or disagreeing. It's a theory that I know nothing about. So <laughs> is it talking about the ineffable. Yeah. The <laughs> yeah right. Right. <laughs> right. I just don't know about the iris and pupil, but that's fine. If that's your, if that's your line of, of study, I'm perfectly amiable with it. It's just an analogy. It's just a childlike analogy because the pupil itself is just that dark right? That same shared dark across all 8 billion, but the iris is uniquely colored across the oh, okay, 8 okay, 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 okay. Now, yeah, yeah, it sounds like you're following yeah, yeah, that. Yeah. And the yeah. diamond that's around each of our necks is is the same. It's the, that diamond is a diamond across all of ours, but then it's refracting yeah. a unique expression yeah, or, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So what, what it amounts to is that because in non-duality too often, and I, I, and I now agree, I understand and agree what you're talking about with the, the eye thing, I was kind of lost there. But <clears throat> the with non-duality, we come to sense that there is, um, we, we come to sense that there's something and there's our sense initially is that but we're not connected to it that's the idea because we think ourselves to be a separate being over here not part of Indra's net but a separate being a, a, a distinct being and we think that we are um disconnected from source if you will or whatever we just begin to get that idea as we move into non-duality and then if we're not careful the easiest move to make and it is it's important once we get past the witness stage because there's there's witnessing but i can't find a witness right i've looked and i just can't find it <laughs> and um so i would say there's <clears throat> there is witnessing that much i can attest to um but as we move as we become to see that the whole with uh the whole concept of a looker or watcher or whatever that that's really just another thought in the end and so <clears throat> there is there's a there's a feeling like i can come to know that but who's that i that's saying that mm -hmm. i've not found that i Mm -hmm. I have done yeah. inquiry with yeah. hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people, yeah. and none of us have ever found that eye, right? Uh, I've had a few people that did uh, report that they found an eye and they didn't wake up, but uh, the people that were with me who did find the eye, which was almost everybody, did find it and did come to did come uh, the, they came to see that there was no eye. Yes. Go ahead. It's probably a good time to bring in this analogy that we also use for this part. And it includes the, the youthful component that we were mentioning earlier as well, which is that when, when the child, when the infant comes in to, to the world, yes. that, that in a sense, it already is the ocean. It already is oh, the absolutely, and then that programming, uh, especially that like around eighteen months, there's that object permanence that kicks yeah. in. There's these yeah. layers of identity. If it's right. not, if it's conscious parents, then the then there will be no drop that forms. Mm. And but if the parents are unconscious, and if and especially because the civilization itself is unconscious, that then what happens is that these layers like onion layers or like the drop itself, this bubble, as you describe also in your teaching, that it forms and then the bubble, it, it, we can call that the egoic contraction of energy, that separate entity is what ends up 
seeking because it's the drop that doesn't realize that it's in the that it's in the ocean. Whereas if you take like the the Kogi mamas, you know, or whatnot, they, they never undergo an experience of of being anything other than the ocean. Yeah, right. And and so so <clears throat> so now what usually happens is you get these like let's say 25 year olds or whatever and they're like what's the nature of reality? I'm not just this egoic contraction, am I? I'm not a biological finite creature. And so then they go seeking and seeking and and there's more and more direct paths now where you don't have to do 30 years in, at a right. monastery. And so, so what happens is that, that in the analogy, the drop gets, you know, that bubble gets popped. And that's what usually what people say when they're like, Oh, everything is oneness, you know, it's all unity. Oh, I get that. And so then that, there's that stage. So most of the approximations with things like spiral dynamics and David Hawkins's levels of consciousness as well, is that there's approximately 85 or so percent of civilization that's living in a state of some of some sort of like a go contraction of identity. And then about maybe 14 or so percent actually pop that and experience the oneness or the unity. But then what happens is there's the recognition that when you're the, the ocean, this observer or the witness or the I am or the self is shared. So you recognize that we are the ocean that is experiencing the waves and the waves are the thoughts, feelings, emotions, perceptions, sensations, that type of stuff. That's like the clouds in the sky. And so all these different analogies for it. And then there's the last, and there's about 14% or so of people there. And then this last layer, which is like the 1% layer, which is what you can say is the absolute or the ineffable, which is when you sort of recognize that even there is no agent, there's no attributes whatsoever. This, the dream or the illusion or the appearance or what, what yeah, happened? How I think do you feel 14 or 15% might be a little high. For even the oneness, <laughs> for even the oneness, for, for not for um, as many people wake up. I think most people wake up at some point in their lives, and it, but it's a brief passing through. They walk right through it. You know, people are seekers who have an awakening, and they say, "Well, I know that can't be it," and they keep going, keep going looking for it. So, <clears throat> what I, I have a, a saying that says that many awaken but few clear. So as far as for move, making the jump from I'm a, I'm a guy to, um, to I'm, well, I just, there's just this, that jump or even to oneness, that there's just oneness. And um, I, had a, I had a very successful oneness teaching for a couple of years. And then awakeness pulled the rug out from underneath me. And it was like, oh, this is a provisional truth, but it's not the actual truth. And so this seeing, experiencing, experiencing oneness consciously, right? So I call that, I would call that conscious awakeness. And people come to that, they get a glimpse, they get uh, uh, their, you know, the, the, the unknown unveils itself for a flash or whatever, and they see something, but they never think about it again, or they do think about it again, but they can't get it back because there's a sense. Here's the bubble of self-reflection. There's a sense. <clears throat> My, it, I had a awakening like that in 1992, and it was, it was absolutely valid, but it was not lo long for this world. Because shortly after I came to realize that I was no thing, uh, I began to be very impressed with anything that could come to know that it's no thing. So in other words, it became like, oh, I got it. And the question is, well, who are you talking about? Yeah. Right. So it's, and, and the egoic principle comes in and claims that seeing for its awakening. Yeah. And then ego is left in the unenviable position of trying because it, because one taste and then you just want another. Yeah. I have people that email me all the time, and these are spiritual addicts, and they don't know, and they think I just, you just need please, I just need one glimpse, just one glimpse. But you know, I had a friend of mine 
dad owned a store and stuff and he took some cocaine one night years ago in the 80s and um but just he said it changed it, it changed the whole man he said, but the first thing I noticed that the new man wanted was more cocaine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. the way that we are with spiritual experiences. Uh, just want yeah. one until I get one and then I want another. And we can actually move beyond all that where it's unnecessary to have what people consider to be altered state experiences or whatever. But a very few of us will move past a very small percentage, I think. I could be wrong. I, I, I actually don't know a damn thing. If Socrates and I are agreed. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, <laughs> so we're just, talk, we're just talking words are coming out. And they're saying what they're saying, but there's yeah. no one saying them and no one listening to them. I'm really glad to have all one of us here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So... so but there, there can be <clears throat> the ones who really penetrate, who go beyond consciousness. Because there's consciousness for many people is the, I mean, I, and I understand that it's the difference in what you mean when you say consciousness and all that. But I do find it very confusing because consciousness seems, you know, I, what are you looking for? I'm looking for consciousness. Well, what are you looking with? I'm looking for with consciousness. Yeah. So, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we can move beyond that. And, but it's not, what you can notice right now is there's a sense of being, everybody that's watching this can just notice that there's a sense of being, there's a sense of aliveness here. There's a sense of presence. And when I, 20 years ago, and I was listening to Eckhart Tolle, I thought that a sense of presence was a prince. I thought God's presence or something else's presence was what I was supposed to be noticing. I never dreamed it was my presence. Yeah, okay. And um, so there is, I would like whatever speaking. Ego would like to understand this. As we've said, it can't <laughs> understand it. It's prior to understanding. And we would, and the sense of being is here, but the sense of being that I can confess that there's a sense of being, but I can't confess what that is. Mm, mm, because mm -hmm. This sense of being, if you try to describe it, you'll find that you can't because it's prior to whatever you are is prior to language. Yeah. yeah. So language comes in and it's all over. And that includes these lies that I'm telling too. <laughs> but I'm, but folks, I'm lying to the very top of my ability. I mean, I, I'm a mm -hmm. professional liar. Mm -hmm. so these are not your <laughs> everyday, ordinary half-baked lies. These are really uh, strongly considered and God approved mm. lies. <laughs> the best we can use symbols to try to point the ineffable. Yeah. Yeah. Because what we, the, I don't know about you, but when I woke up and I, to the truth and it was like, <laughs> man, right, right? Yeah. And, the, and the first thing I noticed yeah, yeah. was, well, there's nothing to talk about. I know. But the second thing I noticed, and this is not just kind of a joke, but it, but the, the, shortly thereafter, what I noticed was that the trying to do so, the attempt to talk about this <laughs> was, was simply the most exquisite thing on the planet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hence what we're doing here right now. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's just, yeah. You, there's nothing better. I yeah. mean, really, you know, I just, uh, I can, I have satsang on Sundays and I, I walk into satsang and there's a bunch of people there and um, it's just like, ah, uh, it's like taking a shower or a bath. It's just warm shower. Just, oh, it's beautiful. Oh, that's a great way to put it. Like a warm shower. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or lo like a loving hug from, yes, that's mom, right. From mom. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> this is, so, so, so well said. This is great. Another sort of way to just briefly touch on the, the, the spiritual addict part is... Oh, let's uh, have it. 
the the I just like how Tony Parsons calls them spiritual lollipops. Yeah, right. You know, just like, like on the next, yeah, on the next one. But um, there's also the like what you mentioned with Socrates, who was called the you know the wisest man. I was man in Athens. Athens because he knew he knew nothing. Yes. Um, and that's why uh, Nisargatha Maharaj also, you know, said that the love is everything and being everything, knowing every being that, and the wisdom is knowing that you're nothing. And then your life flows between the two as well. But his quote, well, Nisargadatta is my core teacher. And uh, what he said was, I breathe in and I'm everything. I breathe out and I'm no thing. no thing. And between those two, my life turns, which okay. is just so beautiful because that really addresses what you were talking about earlier with the simultaneity of things. Yes. Because we can tend to go when we come, when we come to see the truth, we've been living as a, we've been living as a human being all of our lives. No, I knew I was Fred Davis and I knew that a Fred Davis looked just like this until I was about 52. And uh, somewhere around in there, it was discovered that I was not a that I was not a Fred Davis after all, and that there what not only was not a Fred Davis here, there never had been one here. There is that there's only this, but we can when we say only this, we can have a tendency to feel that we're talking about manifestation. And I would say in my, in my teaching, honestly, uh, consciousness, God, and manifestation are synonyms. Yep. And the, but awakeness is that which is prior to all of those things. Awakeness mm. is, it's unnameable, but I'm just going to try because that's so exquisite uh, that it is the potentiality it's by its own, it's by its very absence that there is room for all this presence. Yeah, the the <clears throat> the silence between the notes of music. The, the silence between the notes. That's exactly right. Yeah. Because yep. we can we have a tendency to think we we disregard silence. We disregard space. Yeah. Yeah. We're all caught up in the content of this rising. Yeah. Wow. What what noun will come next? Right? What what will happen next? But I have oh, it's buried. I don't see it. What a shame. Oh, you can God. you can take your time to to, okay. to find it. If oh, you got it. Oh yeah yeah. Got okay. One. Oh cool. So, and this comes about because what we think is we think that space is just this um, annoying thing that is in between everything and everything yeah. else. But <clears throat> when we start to looking at oneness, we, when we start really looking at oneness objectively, then I can't help but notice, I mean, how many spaces do you count right now? Mm -hmm. One. Mm -hmm. Space is not what holds everything apart from everything else. Space is what holds, is the glue that holds everything together. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. So you can look at this and it's two black faces and a goblet or it is um, a, the two black faces with a white background or or a goblet with a black background. That, and that's called the Reuben vase, I believe. Okay, and so it's a Reuben yeah. vase. So which of these is true? Exactly. That's, both. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Both or neither. Anyway, either way yeah. you want to put it, but you can't say one or the other because it just doesn't work like that. And this doesn't work like that because <clears throat> where we're living is relativity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And everything exists only by comparison to something else. Like you're pretty sure I'm a Fred Davis because you've seen me on YouTube <laughs> and this and that and the other. But the other thing is you're pretty sure that this isn't Fred Davis. Oh. <laughs> so it's very easy to, to home in on this part and say, oh, there's Fred. and. The rest of that is not Fred, but there's no opposite to you. There's just you. There's no, it's non-duality already. Yeah. 
And we can tend to get lost in the idea that I am just the vastness. Oh, I'm just the vastness. Who cares about the unit is what I call the bodies. Who cares about the unit? But the, we are not merely the vastness, nor are we merely the little man. We're both. Mm -hmm. So there is the experience from the, the from the absolute that mm -hmm. obviously relativity just doesn't matter. But relativity is our experience, and we honor it. If, if we do not honor it, we do so at the, the there will be suffering will ensue. Mm. But it's not that we are this one or we are that one. It's there's not a this or that. There's just the nameless, and there's no opposite to that nameless. Mm -hmm. And so when we, but that nameless is both duality, the sense of dual, uh, the dualistic and the and non-dualistic at the same time. In other words, exactly I, right. Yeah. yeah. So there's this experience where. Obviously, for me, for me, obviously, this is all me. This is I, I, there's nothing but me. But then this is me too, because this is an experience. The Fredness yeah. story continues. Thank goodness. And right? this is what happened, you know, a thousand plus years ago. Was the was it was how do we put into us into one symbol? How do we put the non dual and the dual into one symbol? And that's what you just pulled up a moment ago, the yin and yang. Yeah. And and yeah. <clears throat> so and that's what you were explaining from multiple faces of the mountain was just at a moment ago when you gave the Ruben vase example and there's a, a couple places that I'd like to just go back to a little bit a moment ago, you were saying that there's kind of, there's these two things that, that were great that you mentioned that sort of what happens when there's this Satori or, or, or Moksha or Nirvana, or whatnot, that you, the realization as you quote, you quote Lao Tzu a lot, you know, we do as well. You do realize that the Tao that can be named is not the eternal Tao. And, and Lao Tzu also said that those who know don't talk and those who talk don't know. And that's another way to put it as well. And so you learn that both there's nothing to talk about, like you said, but then the second thing is that you learn that the attempt to try to talk about the is ineffable that, is, is the warm, it's the warm right. power. That's it is makes life worth living, so to speak. It is because, and we basically, what we do is we, we play, we play when we talk, when we, when we attempt all I can at, see at the ineffable, yeah, I'm with you. it's a divine play. Yeah. It's that mm -hmm. Leela when mm -hmm. we're, when we're attempting <laughs> using these symbols to, to uh, play with that ineffable it's, it is the warm shower. It is that hug. That's what it, that's what it, it feels like. It, yeah. yeah. Someone, and, and uh, we'll excuse them on technical errors, but someone once put it very sweetly when uh, they said that to talk about this with another, someone else on, on your, the same level, so to speak. I mean, someone else who's seen the truth that, that is the embodiment of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's such a good way to put it. Yeah. 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 We call it tennis. This is another yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. way to, yeah, it's, 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 it's tennis. And um, yeah. Yeah. And we're just kind of hitting the volleys over and it's just so playful. And yeah, because there's just a zillion balls behind us. I know. <laughs> Some, somebody hits a volley and the ball is just so interesting. I don't have any interest in hitting it, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Nor do I have the power to hit it, but it's a yeah. fascinating ball. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Wow. Like one of the core potentially, we could say if we want to just most beautiful aspects to the appearance is when the 
tennis players themselves are really strong, advanced, maybe, you know, world-class level tennis players where it is the most beautiful, where the game of tennis that's being played is so close to the ineffable. It, yeah. It, 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 bump, it bumps your game to play with a great tennis player. Yes. And I think that this is the reason that Nizagodato said that the only thing that was really necessary uh, for awakening was to spend time in the company of sages. Yes. yes. And it doesn't mean it's actually going to rub off, but it, there's a good chance that you'll just, there will be a falling in. There will be a, oh, 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 you yeah, know? Yeah. And oh, that. And right? It's, we're actually this. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, and in 2020, I spent a lot of time on just full-time dedicating myself to truth, just nonstop as a full-time job and studying these geniuses that have lived and died before us and not just spiritual ones, but also the scientific ones, the engineer ones, the inventor ones, because it's also interesting to see their patterns as well. And so the sort of Satori that was just a little about a month ago now um, that just, just, you know, it creates that uh, this is probably a good segue into that where there is no longer an Atlas. Right. Yeah. No, Actually, yeah. it's not that there's no longer an Atlas. It's the seeing that there never was an Atlas. <laughs> there, there never was one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Because that's a that's our problem is well what will happen to Fred when Fred wakes up? Well, don't worry about it because Fred will never wake. Awakeness itself wakes up, doesn't it? Yeah. Awakeness wakes up to the fact that hell, I've been looking for a noun. I've been look, it's looking for because they told me look for something that doesn't come and go, and I went looking for something that doesn't come and go. It never dawned on me that the only that I, everything here comes and goes other than the space which holds it, right? And it's spaciousness that we're really talking about, not space in the outer space kind of way, but spaciousness. And that of course is what we really are. There's, it, none, nothing can exist without this spaciousness. And, but, and, and, and spaciousness is the mirror in which all the reflections appear. And this is a pair of reflections coming to have some high-minded high conversation about the mirror. <laughs> yeah, yes. Uh, do you believe in mirrors? Well, I'm not sure I believe in mirrors, said the, said the reflection. Yeah, but the reflection yeah. can't exist in the absence of a mirror. So it's coming to see... Well... It's not that we come to see the truth. It's that the truth comes to see. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> and the game that the truth plays to come to see is so fascinating. It, uh, wow. The in Within this appearance, there is nothing else that I've ever encountered where there's an ability for a singularity to veil itself and then to pierce that veil. Mm -hmm. And that's like the coolest feature. Well, it's, and, and then we recognize that it's the veilless veil. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's, just, it's just like my bubble of self-reflection. Well, there's no bubble there. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. the bubbleless bubble, just like it's the gateless gate, right? Yeah, yeah, the veilless veil, the gateless gate. Yeah. Wow. Gosh, that's such a fascinating. Yeah, thing. yeah, it is. And because it comes right back to what you were talking about with the simultaneous. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We simultaneously experience, there's an experience of something that can only be reported as a gate, yeah. a gateway. <laughs> And it was, and it was just absolutely remarkable. But then it's recognized there's, there's, there's no gate to the guy. This must be the reason they call it the gateless gate. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's yeah. because there's no gate. Oh, how about that? We know, you know, when they said it was the gateless gate, it was like, what do they mean by that? Ooh, well, okay. I want to get my teeth into that. I want to figure that out. But in fact, there was nothing complex about it. They were just saying, well, it's a gateless gate. What, what does that mean by that? Well, this is it. But it's so simple that these big complex brains of ours, they don't want to hear that. They want something to gnaw on. They want something to, they want something that the brain can achieve. I'm so loving the veilless veil and the gateless <laughs> gate. And my question slash thought to you around that would be something like, yet simultaneously as we hold that, we also recognize that when we do the practices that are things like a Theravada Buddhism, silent 10 day meditation retreat, no talking, no eye contact, just going inward and making ourselves less reactive with the monkey mind um, and sort of gaining that real subtlety that that's sort of needed to be able to to understand things like this as well, um, that there are these, in a sense, there, whether you also, you know, read the Tao Te Ching or the uh, Old and New Testament, or you take some entheogens, maybe some psilocybin to, to undergo some of this flow, whatever these sort of faces are, are on the mountain, in, in a sense, at the same time, we recognize that the more sometimes of these different tastes that we have, the in a, in a sense, the, the more robust of a lattice work that we have that enables us to better and better sort of recognize this, which is maybe this is one of the things that I feel about Neo Advaita specifically, that is, it's, it's beautiful in its direct pointing, um, yet at the same time, it, to, to, to somebody in a state of maybe an egoic level of, of a contracted energy in the bubble that uh, there can also be like little, the, the, the whole thing about the incremental path versus the sudden path and whatnot. So how do you feel as well about while we talk about this veilless veil and the gateless gate, that there are also this, this, this idea of sort of building up a, a, uh, a, a nomenclature or a lexicon, a concept framework, these types of things across these different um, perennial wisdoms. I think we've, uh, I think we've had that confused up for a long time, confused for a long time. And here's why I think that okay. is that we've been pointing toward, is it this or is it like that? And it's not like this or that it's this and that. So what we amount to is, is awakening an event or a process, it's both. Mm. It may not be a recognized event. I mean, I have, I've, I've woken up with, I've had hundreds of people wake up with me and I, they, and the, the awakenings range from, oh my God, to you're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> one of the most clear, one of the clearest humans I know woke up with me saying, you're kidding. No. And then right after that, he went, Oh, I can't because he had been a, he's been a, a, a spiritual teacher and everything and gone around the world and this and that and the other, he just left out the know who you are part. <laughs> but when he wake up, woke up, there was such context there that he just blew everything off the map. Right. He just woke up and it was just, boom. and it doesn't, ha you don't have to, be a teacher for 30 years for that to happen but it doesn't hurt right or to be a seeker for 30 years it doesn't hurt but what we can notice about when we look at let's say traditional advaita compared to what we call neo advaita or sudden awakening and we look go all the way back to zen in china and it was like you know we had the southern school and the northern school northern people said it was an event the southern people said it was a process Anybody that I talk to has been awakening for some time. 
and yeah. with me, they come and they recognize this. And what they really recognize is not that they've been awakening, but they really come to recognize that they are awakeness itself. And that's the difference because we talk about I'm awake, but she's not, or he's awake, but I'm not. But this awake, not awake thing, what's that? What's that? Oh, it's duality, isn't it? Yeah. So what we you gave the analogy in one of your recent talks where you said that it's like you you get out of bed in the morning, you're rubbing your eyes and opening up and somebody's there going, wake up. It's like, I'm already awake. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Right. Exactly. How, it, it, how, how, what shall I do to convince you that I'm awake? It's, and that's what I like to turn that on tables on that. And sometimes I'll ask people the, uh, so um, is there any way, if you had to right now and you had to convince me that you were not awake, how would you do that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we don't think about it because yeah. we come at it from, we come out through the front door, which yeah. is how can I be oneness? I mean, I'm just this little thing over here. Yeah, how, yeah, yeah. How can I be oneness? But when we come at it from being oneness, when this teaching, I only work with myself, right? Yeah, yeah, a, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. this is a, yeah, yeah. It's what's happening here. Yep. Is that oneness is talking to oneness about oneness because there's no one else to talk and there's no other subject. Yeah. And, right? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but here, but here, the obvious is obvious. That's all. The obvious is always is always. There's the ability to to break through and see the obvious. And how, you know how does that work? We we talk about, and I, I, I even talk about breakthroughs and breakthrough phrases and th stuff like this. But it's it's not breaking through. It's noticing that there's, that there's nothing to break through, that there's no, that there's no wall there, that we're not, we haven't reached the top of the mountain. There was never a mountain and we're just walking along the beach with everything just flat as right. And, but we've been, we've been making up mountains and, and we've been making up adventures about them. It, would it be fair to say that there's that both the simultaneity with the <clears throat> mountain and the beach I, I, are ha, at the same time as in the the most non-dual is the beach and then the the dualistic concession is that there's this mountain yeah okay absolutely okay. absolutely okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. cool I'm right i'm right with you okay so but we spend all of our time and i'll put all, all <laughs> our attention on the mountain yeah. We don't put any time at all on the beach. Uh, what could the ocean is just teeming with life and all this stuff, and we're like, ah, it's just water, man. This mountain is where is what's really cool, and so we spend all of our times, all of our time, caught up in the content of this arising, and instead of what is it that is experiencing the content of this arising yeah that's the only thing worth looking yeah. for and you you don't need to look for it you just need to notice it yeah because i heard when i was coming along you know the the seeker never wakes up and i heard that and i thought now that's a good thing to know so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pretend to stop seeking because you can't you can't find it as long as you're looking for it so i pretended to not to not look for it in the hopes that somehow it trick uh, God into showing herself, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I couldn't even fake it. It was just such a, I mean, I was just doomed to sink, uh, to, to seek. That's what, I mean, I had no choice. I'm sure you didn't either. I mean, it just drove me. It drove everything, yep. 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 right? It, yep. it did. It told me what time I was going to bed at night, what time I was getting up in the morning, what I was going to do that day and yep. all of that. I mean, it was just this constant, oh, please. Yeah. Right. And it's, it's just be just like me right now asking you. So Atlas, <clears throat> tell me, how do I get to the chair in my study? Yeah, this is funny. I like this one as well. Yeah. And you're going, well, you know, Fred, you're already in your chair in your study. Yeah. Yeah. 
oh, thanks, Atlas. I appreciate that. And I, and I understand that. I'm on board with that. But it's not my, just not my experience that I'm in my chair in my study. So what do you do, what directions would you suggest now? Right? There's 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 no we just there is no giving directions to here. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, there you go. Yeah, there's no giving directions to here. <laughs> and that's what everybody's asking for. Could you please direct me toward here? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I could. I could charge him money for it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you sign up for my subscription service. That's to, right. Exactly. Yeah, to hear. yeah, that's right. It's but so many work. perverse incentives around that. Oh, I know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, so there's um <clears throat> there's two things. One of them is Saint Francis of Assisi says that that which you seek is that which is seeking that's correct and then the other one is um posted these a little while ago as well that ramana maharshi says that god is the subject he is the seer don't concern yourself with objects that can be seen find out who the seer is mm -hmm. and then punja says the desire for self slash god realization is like an inner flame one must kindle it and then fan it until it becomes a raging fire, which consumes all one's other desires and interests. And well, and, and what I would say to that is he's right. If that's what that unit needs to do. Yeah. Yeah. Which is what it sounds like both of ours. Yeah. Had it, it just, right. that, it is that yeah. it perfectly explains yeah. what we're, where we were, but it doesn't explain everybody. So yeah, the thing is, exactly. That, yeah. 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 These yeah. days I actually get, quite a number of students. I mean, they don't knock on the door every day, but I get, I get a lot of people that come to me who have already awakened. And there's a lot of what I call inherent wakefulness there, but there's no real clarity. You so uh, can you describe this? So inherent, inherent wakefulness, but no clarity. What, yeah, what does this mean? In other words, there's been an awakening event. And now the character has a memory of that awakening event. And it's a very, very detailed, deep sort of memory about something very much like a spiritual awakening. Okay. But a spiritual awakening can't be remembered because there's no one there to remember it. <laughs> right? <laughs> so it's a character's report on the tail end of some kind of experience where, wow, it was really different. And for Fred. Yeah, yeah. But I have sometimes, once in a while, I mean, I have people that will, will and I don't, I'm not doing private sessions now, but I did, I did them for a, a long, long time. And you, you um, stopped doing them? I didn't, I didn't know that. Well, I'm, what I'm, I've become overrun. Yeah. And, uh, and, and it's just too much of a physical burden for this old man. Yeah, so yeah. I still am doing, um, I still meet with, I still meet with with regular students in my I have something called like a call continuing students program where I have a bunch of people that come and talk to me once a month. It's, that's your and satsang. It's with the people inside. No, there's the people who have come and have one on one sessions with me once a month. These are people that I'm yeah. sort of okay. caretaking, and okay. um, and I also and then I have what I call now is the this is this is a new development. Um, which is the skillful means programs, which is our series, which is I do three series, I mean, three sessions in three successive Saturdays, but I'm doing it with 20 people instead of one. Okay. Cool. Right. Cause I just can't, the world would, would, the world would like more of, of Fred than there is Fred. And I keep moving the prices up and it just doesn't touch anything. You know, I mean, there's still somebody that will pay nearly anything for this. And uh, it just got to be, I'd rather do it for a bunch of people. For a bunch all. of, yeah, yeah. And then field questions as well field at the questions. end. Yeah, yeah and, the next two sessions of this, the, 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 the following, the first session, the good news is they don't get to talk. <laughs> <laughs> and because the, the biggest, the biz, biggest, problem that I had in one-on-one -on -one awakening sessions was 
that everybody wanted to make sure that I understood their issue and where their special self was coming from. And I needed to know about this about their childhood and this about that. And wow. they couldn't understand it from this and couldn't can see it from that. So in other words, people would pay me a bunch of money to help them wake up my way. And they would come to me and they, what they were really wanting me to do is pay, pay me a lot of money to wake them up their way. Yeah, yeah. Without noticing, and I would sometimes point out, well, let's just let's let's look here. We got there's two of us here. One of us has been in let's just say a thousand awakening sessions, and the other one has been in how many have you been in? Uh, a one? Yeah. Well, who do you think we should be listening to? <laughs> yep. Yep. Right? It's they they want to help, and I did the same thing. I did exactly the same thing. I was just that kind of fool. I cut a fool with, with Ajashanti. I was awake, but I, but I couldn't help it. It was Ajashanti. Oh my God. And uh, I, wanted, I wanted him to see just how awake I was. And that was actually more important than my question was for Aja to notice that I was awake and all this. Wow. Uh, and I get that too. And, you know, so where, what you're really looking, you're, you're in the guise of asking the question, what the question you're really asking is, will you give me confirmation of my awakening? Yeah. And sometimes people come to me that I right out the gate that I can see and I can give them confirmation, but I never give confirmation if it hasn't occurred. And mm -hmm. most of the people in search of confirmation are not awake. Mm -hmm. because what i noticed is that by the time you get confirmation you don't really need it it's nice mm -hmm. to have it it's nice to have an, a, a teacher say okay you got it this that and the other and, uh, and i've had a bit of that but i it but it's unnecessary because yeah. you already know who you are yeah so yeah. the confirmation of one empty unit to another empty unit yeah is of marginal value yeah yeah <laughs> There's another component to what we were just talking about, which is the it's probably the most important, at least in my understanding of what is happening here, which is that in the recognition of the tennis players that are doing at high levels, uh, using symbols to play with the ineffable, we recognize that there's the simultaneity in that there's this sort of non-dual beach as well as this dual mountain and that the experience of both yes yeah yeah and that this is sort of where the the we already are the diamond necklace around our neck only those that are ignorance seek what's already there it sort of meets with the well what are we talking about with that diamond necklace when there is that contracted egoic entity that doesn't understand that that so the, and the thing, yeah. the, the thing that we have to come to recognize is that the egoic entity that we think we are that we think that exists because there is there's no one there there's no entity that's <laughs> yeah. ever going to get yeah. So what we have is we have an imaginary character who is, <laughs> has pinned all of his hopes on the idea that one day, if I keep at this, I'm going to come to recognize that I'm an imaginary character. You, it, you can't get there from here. It can't happen. So it is the seeing through. The, the bubble of self-reflection is when where most people are when they come to me. They've been in this a while, and they come, have come to have the... Uh, and even, it's even beyond just purely intellectual but they have a, a grasp of this that we're speaking of they, there's a 
and they and and they do have a very good intellectual understanding and we don't we play the intellectual down too much i think there's a there's value in that yeah because i use the mind to go beyond the mind but i can't i gotta start with the mind i use the body to go beyond the body i use logic to go beyond logic but we gotta start with tools here Mm -hmm. and there is i forgot what we're talking about now that's what happens is that this thread will run awakeness will go for, to get some coffee and then you're left with Fred and he has nothing to share. <laughs> yeah. He has yeah. a lot to share, but nothing that you would want to hear. So what were we yeah. talking about? Well, that's the true sign as well, where there's so much divine play that is where you, there's been that recognition of that diamond necklace around the neck to the degree of which we recognize how playful it is to be able to say great let's hit some tennis balls in the ineffable and then let's let's just completely maybe we pl- play in some other way and right. we and there's yeah. and there's let's so try it without rackets without rackets <laughs> yeah let's let's use our feet for a little while let's and then, use it without let's try it without balls without balls yeah. exactly and well, and that's why the way that you express yourself is in a very playful and it's in a very childlike and and you have and that's 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 another big sort of highlight if there were quote highlights of awakened or enlightened it it's it has a lot to do with happiness it has a lot to do with peace it has a lot to do with childlike it has a lot to do with that afterward but it doesn't have any necessarily anything to do with that prior to yeah. I, mean, I, th- I find that misery is the door most. Yeah. 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 Suffering, suffering is the drill sergeant. And then, yeah. 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 Let yeah, me yeah. jump back to the thing that I was talking about a minute ago when I okay. lost my train of thought. Okay. I was talking about the bottle of self reflection. So Bob comes to me and Bob already knows that, that. So, you know, and this, and they already know there's no Bob. So they come to me and then I start going on about, you know, that there's no Bob thing and they're going, when is he going to get to the good part? I mean, because this thing is, this is driving me crazy. I already know all this. And um, I have to just be very humble and kowtow to the ego to try to get it to stay with me long enough for understanding to take place. And when the understanding with a capital U occurs, what what is recognized, has been recognized by me, but it's all written now, it's recognized by me over there as well which is that the one who knew, who knows there is no Bob is Bob. And that is the booby prize of non-duality. Welcome. You have worked yourself all the way to the booby prize. I'm not telling you it's not, that it's no prize at all. It's that, that can be useful. That can, you, can, you can moderate suffering from that place, but it's not true. So, so coming to see that the only thing that counts is when awakeness comes to see that there is no Bob, and that not only did not, Bob didn't just leave the room, uh, there's no Bob, there was never any Bob. And that when, when we talk about the fact that, when I say that you are the unborn, that's not a pointer. <laughs> it's just a comment, like I would say, I like your headphones. You are the unborn. So, and I tell you, that you are the unborn and the and then the born wants to know what what's he pointing at there right you like they tell me um so fred you you actually are the awake space i heard that the spacious emptiness you are the aware space I heard these things and the only problem was i just you know, I just didn't know which space they were talking about. But I did know which space they could be talking about, which was this one. <laughs> but they, it, there's only this space. So any idea that I'm going to lose, leave this space to find this space, you know, good luck with that. But you're going to have a hell of, How long can awakeness look for awakeness without having any luck? forever it and it appears that that seems to be the way of it for most people and your record your, your, your sources say 
15% of the people get it, get it. Uh, that's fine with me. I don't care. I just think that's high for, for my experience, but it, but it doesn't make any difference. Some percentage come a whiteness through certain, and it's not like the unit comes to see that. It's a whiteness that comes to see that, oh, there's no Fred. There's never been a Fred. Fred is not going to get this. Fred is not going to capture this and be able to show it off, which is what Fred really wanted. Because it was like, you know, I wanted to be the one who achieved enlightenment and have the teacher notice that I had achieved enlightenment. And teacher, teacher put a gold star by Fred's name mm-hmm. and also give me a big gold star and put it on my forehead mm-hmm. so everybody can <laughs> see that I'm the special one who achieved enlightenment. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Down yeah, the yeah. tube, down the tube. That's that's so funny. This thing works backwards than what the way that we think it does. All of non duality, the truth, Mm -hmm. let's put it that way the truth works backwards in the way we think it does. And that's the reason you can't teach a unit how to wake up. It's probably, I mean, that the unit is never going to wake up. This meat does not have the capacity to be enlightened meat, just like this water glass has no capacity to be an enlightened water glass. But it's actually, it's not about the glass, it's about the water. And for this walking cadaver, it's not about the cadaver, it's about the animating presence. Yeah, you've used that before, the animating presence. Yeah, will you yeah, unpack that for us again? So the animating presence is simply what you can notice right now is everybody can do this. Just, you know, just notice that there is that sense of aliveness we talked about earlier. Yeah. That there's a sense of aliveness here. And there, there's a there's a sense, it's just like a sense of being here, whatever. I'm not even saying what here is. I'm just saying there's a sense of being, and I'm gonna say the, the, the feeling will be there's a sense of being here. And what we think we are is we think we're the vehicle through which that feeling occurs uh but we think that that is occurring to the vehicle instead of through the vehicle in other words i really think there's a friend over here and i've i've got myself some 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 very high-minded knowledge about non-duality and it says fred and 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 you don't understand it so well let me help you because so now i have the enlightened fred helping these poor other units who just kind of slow units just can't seem to get it and they will never get it as long as there is an ego that they may wake up in spite of that teaching but they won't wake up because of it as long as there is if the teacher believes that they are the enlightened ones whatever you're dead in the water or you I mean you, before you even enter the room it doesn't mean those people can't be helpful. They can. It doesn't mean we shouldn't have them because I know that we do. But I noticed that the percentages, let me just take all religions, take the, the, the and, and spiritual circles. And out of all those, how many people really break through? I mean, our numbers are pretty good now. You know, there's you and me and a bunch of other people we know. And uh, well, lots of bunches. And I know about people in other um, uh, other continents and all this and that and the other. And man, we could fill up a football stadium. Okay. Maybe we could fill up five of them. I don't know. But I don't think there's that many more of us. Just, just to also to make sure that on the statistics thing, um, <clears throat> it's approximately 1% or so are um recognizing the agent list or the attribute list yeah yeah and then, and then about uh 15 or so percent or 14 or so percent are 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 on the uh the the observer or the witness that is experiencing the waves so the ocean experiencing the waves and then the 85% or so are on that uh I'm a separate biological creature um ah, yeah yes yeah. so that, that was the, the that, okay. yeah i had that mixed up thank you 
Yeah, yeah, that, and that's why it makes more sense now because it's it's yes, just right. it's a couple right. football stadiums or or whatnot. Um, right. Yeah, yeah, and and, it may be a bunch of them, but it, but it, we can still measure it with football players. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, and and then there was probably also another aspect to this, which is that animating presence is what is kind of the beach. It's what everybody, in a sense, has as a sense of being or an aliveness although it's although it's um maybe to different degrees of that like aliveness um but then that one percent is more like the top of the mountain where there is a quote you know somebody that's a fred davis that is able to host this um this satsang where he also brings in dozens of people into it so that they gain a, a little bit more of the um, pro journey up the mountain while again, it's just while it's also a beach, the beach is yeah. like, yeah. And so to hold these at the same time is, is very critical. And I think one of the next things also for us to touch on is that the, the same way and this, this usually is really helpful for people to sort of get the, the, you know got in a sense it's like a gondola ride up to the mountaintop and then the recognition of the beach and so the way that that sort of also uh ha happens is that when you do things like give these analogies with things like the the dream where for a third of our lives we're we're sleeping and then we we simulate out a a, a dreamed environment that we take a first person perspective into and there's no there's no difference between the observer there and its physical environment that those are one thing the entire thing as you walk past the tree as you walk past it and you keep going in the dream that tree doesn't stay there and so in the dream and so the the analogy to draw for this as well is that this is on a you know as above so below that this is in a sense we could say god's dream or infinite consciousness yes. so, so, yeah. so the core dream is we when we started getting this thing then it was oh god it's all a dream i can't believe it it's, and it's fred and atlas's dream yeah but when we really get it then there's the recognition oh hell fred and atlas are the dream that's the dream is I'm dreaming that I'm a Fred. I'm dreaming that I'm a Fred. There you go. Yeah. 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 I awakeness. I'm dreaming that I'm a Fred and yeah. that I'm having all these adventures, but yeah. Um, yeah, 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 a, yeah, yeah. Right. And there's yeah. a sense of that, yeah. but I played with virtual reality and there's a sense that I could move imaginary blocks and stack them on top of other imaginary yeah. blocks. There's that sensation and everything you can see it. Exactly. And, but it's not, that's an experience. It's not, this experience is a is a good teacher but it's not necessarily true always either it's very much like the sense of being there's a sense of being is that the same thing as saying i am being it's really not there's a there's a sense of being that's a that's a statement unto itself there is and there is a um as long as we think that this is my dream and I have a guy, how can I break out of this dream? We're screwed. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Because so, I mean, that's what I wanted. I wanted out. I was suffering and I wanted out of that dream. And <clears throat> then what I got out of was being a Fred. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If what I and got I out noticed, of yeah. oh, well, I'm not, I'm not dreaming that I'm a Fred any longer. And the facts on the ground may remain the same, but I noticed that nothing pertain, none of them pertain to me. Because I am the I am the awakeness. I am the the animating presence. I'm not I am unborn, just exactly what it says. I'm, the whatever it is that's talking through this unit right now, it's not on planet. It's not on planet. Its mother's yeah. name was not Olive. Mm -hmm. It has no mother. Mm -hmm, mm hmm. It's the recognition of the white 
source light that is refracted through the the diamond here and there and and that is taking on that unique coloration yeah. and experience yeah. And, yeah but to to but to go it, it, the, it, the mountaintop it, to go inward to the source again it's it's a very much a self-abiding style process that leads to these this atma vitra is it's not something to say that ah you know it's this is one of the just one of the things that i see with the sort of neo advaita and the pointing out is that there's a there are there's it's great to have this sudden style of of recognition mm -hmm. of the diamond necklace already around the neck and yet it's also important to recognize that like we were saying a little bit earlier, just that when you do take the 10 days to just zip and say no words and just go all the way down to the roots of the monkey mind and make yourself less reactive and make yourself more, give yourself more of that pause. Um, so what, let, let's yeah, be, yeah. We want to be careful about our language from my standpoint. Yes, yes. I would want to be very, very careful with language. Yes. I can't make myself be anything given the fact that I'm not. Yeah, yeah, and that's so at the. It allows it, yeah. it allows for change to take place, but I'm not doing the changing. Yeah, and this is sort of the next subject as well, which is in that dream analogy itself, that the when when one recognizes that agentless or that attributeless, then the whole idea of free will just dissolves, and that's another. Yeah, yeah, because what the philosophers are asking themselves is do we have free will or do we not? And they've been debating about it for thousands of years. And my have a different question. And my question is who are they talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Who are they talking about? Are who we are they talking, talking about? Because who if they this, answer, there's no one here to be enlightened and there's, or there's no one here to have free will and there's no one here to not have free will. It, the whole thing is a story and it's a story that keeps you off you keeps your eye off the camera. You're so busy looking at the birdie that the photographer's got over there that you you yeah. don't look at the camera. Exactly. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, which is why Ramana said to pay attention to the seer. Because when you yeah. ask the when you ask the question when, who are they talking about? Um, because that can lead somebody to to, re to recognition that, oh, my individual contracted ego. And then that leads to further recognition that e that, that that is a, uh, that's hilarious, that that's, that that's the thinking process versus if the answer is something like um, God or infinite consciousness and these appearances of expressions, that then the question uh, of free will dissolves, it becomes, it becomes more and more of a, um, you know, of that question of who are they talking about that would have that. There's nobody here to have it or not have it, like you're saying. Yeah, that's, yeah, that way of putting it. It's it's an it's an imaginary character is another way that you've you've said it as well, yeah. which has been helpful. I mean, the one the one who desperately wants to wake up. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I didn't hear the last part of what you said. Just that the the imaginary character has been another way that it's been helpful it's like it's like in a sense it's like if like you know we a, another potentially good way to say it is that it's anarchic right that that there's an yeah there's a, like an anarchic yeah. expression to the non-dual yeah and yeah. Yeah. and that um to sort of then ascribe that oh well there's going to be this this meaning or this purpose to that anarchicness or that there's going to be this these layers of identity around this one this one this one that is this atlas one and that that fred one and that there's going to be these you know these very real seeming layers of of identity and these real seeming layers of expression and appearance to it that and that there's all this meaning and all of this purpose to it. And, it, and it's not to say that um, it's 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 definitely not in the nihilism has a lot of um, baggage uh, and negative connotation. It's uh, that's why the whole like metaphysical anarchy it just it, it sort of vibes a little bit more like clearly. 
Yeah. Yeah. So maybe that would be a good place to sort of um, run with you for a bit is that how does, how do, how do things like a metaphysical anarchy as a, a, as a descriptor of the ineffable non-dual, how do, how does that of the mystery, how does that resonate with you? So uh, I understand that I understand the phrase, and I think that it's a it's a helpful phrase. But we we just want to be careful because I have a lot of helpful phrases too, and none of them are true. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I, yeah. What can we do? What can we do? I, I have. Yeah, yeah. I, I have. Because um, this teaching is very very direct, but I know people who have, or I don't know them personally, but I know of. Uh, a, a couple of teachers that have that take an even more direct approach where there's just they just it's just almost ignoring relativity and the I feel like these phrases they give us a handhold and I understand the purpose of a teaching for not giving anybody a handhold and we need that teaching it's great I admire it I respect it Simultaneously, I noticed that there are not a lot of the people in the room going, oh, so much of that can become a personality cult. And I don't mean that in a bad way, cult, cult. I just mean can, it can become a personality teaching or whatever if we're not careful because it is fascinating. Interesting. But it's for many people, those stark teachings, as I would call it, are not particularly helpful. And this teaching is, I know everything I'm saying is a lie, <clears throat> but I, what I find is I tell provisional truths, which is another way to, 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 to take the, the, the burn off of the, uh, off of the lie aspect of that. You said that earlier, the provisional truth. And I, yeah. I really appreciate how often that you're saying this over and over again, which is that I know everything that I'm saying is a lie. So yeah. it's so interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. I mean, the, the people, people pay me to lie to them. And then, and it, but remarkably, even more. Remarkable wait, wait, wait. That, it's both. It's both because you're there. It's both that everything that we're saying is a lie because the ineffable can't have symbols to, to describe it. Yet it's also true in the sense that there, it, the, 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 the non, the non-dual appearance of what this is, is all just happening. And so it is also the simultaneous just truth yes. of expression of it. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. It's, yeah. all, it's, it's always both. And yeah. Yeah. It's never, it's never one or the other, and that's what that's what people really want. And they yeah. want to. Would you just spit it out? I just did. But would you tell me, is it like this or is it like this? Mm -hmm. And it's like it's well, it's not like either one of those. Well, it's got to be one or the other, and that's what they're open to hearing. Is. Mm -hmm. one of their theories or the other one of their theories but there's not so much openness in hearing what's true which is well both of those things are true depends on where you're looking from da, da, da. i mean just like our our model of the with the two faces you call it something ruben's face yeah ruben's face just yeah. like the ruben's face is is that which is true well i mean it's 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 both true neither it's true but you, but certainly it wouldn't be true to say that one is the truth over the other. Yeah, yeah. To say that the two black faces or the vase, um, the two black faces or the white vase, one of yeah. those is true, or neither is true, or both are true. That was a really great um, part. And another thing that you said, which was great, was that to be super careful when when we say things like that oh the you know the closest that we can get is that oh it's just simply this happening or it's metaphysical anarchy or whatever that it becomes a personality teaching i really yeah, appreciated yeah, you saying yeah, that as well yeah, yeah it does and what yeah. we want to what we want to notice is that i'm going to say that i could uh, uh, i was very lucky i had some uh, I, didn't, I never stuck with any teacher for too long other after eckhart to totally and he never met me and i never met him so the uh 
it's hard to, but, but he is nonetheless, I would say he was my teacher for quite some time. I read just, I mean, I read his books. I listened to his CDs yeah. over, and over and over to, to just a nauseating degree to an unhealthy degree. <laughs> and <clears throat> there, but after that, I had a lot of help, but I, but most of the help I've had, I felt like peaked and that, and then I found it not so helpful. And even Eckhart, I got to where I couldn't hear him for anything. I mean, I'd read his book, like, what not it? Because there was not enough directness there. And, but then on the other hand, there's too much directness, but it's, 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 it, the saying is that when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And I like to modify that and say, when the student is ready, the teaching will appear. Yeah. If you're That's ready, right. the teaching that you can hear will appear. Yeah. And the real miracle about, it, about my students and followers and stuff is simply that they found someone they can hear. And that's that's the great miracle, you know. I, I found I found I found somebody I could hear. I could hear Eckhart, but I couldn't I couldn't move on from there. I couldn't I just couldn't. There was uh, I couldn't I couldn't wake up. Yeah. And um, I, but I could but I got a thorough schooling. And um, but straight from his. Uh, straight from his arms, I went to other people that I didn't want to spend so much time with, but that I could hear them. And there was a rapid, really a, a, a very rapid movement of understanding. I mean, I was, a, I was awake for five years before I ever started teaching, which is not a bad idea that it's, I think it's typically ignored, but it's not a bad idea. But yeah. Uh, I, I, I want, I wanted very much to be a teacher and until, um, until I woke up and went to see Ajashanti and I went, eh, I don't think so. Thanks. I didn't, I didn't want to be, a, after that, I didn't want to be a spiritual teacher. And within a month, the first person woke up while talking to me. I mean, it was just, so the instant I didn't want to be a teacher anymore, I got, I became one. And then I tried to quit later on. I couldn't, it wouldn't let me do that either. So now I just embrace it for completely. I love it. This is what I do. I wouldn't want to do anything else because there isn't anything else. Yeah. Wow. That's such a cool part of your story is the, that, that process of even post Satori or Moksha or Nirvana, just sort of taking a, time to just be that for even five years is so cr critical right after for me because well we have the this show in this channel and in a sense it's kind of it, it's in it's like a lot of uh a lot of people are you know curious like okay well we're in a sense they're sub they're subscribing in a sense to also the interviewer as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they kind of want to, so if the interviewer has underwent this Satori there, it, it was important for me to share. And so then I went through this path, this process of being like, this is crazy. There's going to be these, you know, these couple, you know, direct path teachings and these videos that we're now, you know, undergoing, doing these many different faces to that one end that we were been talking about, but specifically with your journey, I really loved how you were just like, nope, this is not my thing, definitely not my thing. And then you're just in conversation with somebody and it just clicks for them. And you're just like, what could be cooler than literally having people have the click moment? Yeah. Yeah. And there, there's a, um, <clears throat> you can kind of get addicted to that too. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> because it is, it is, it is extremely pleasurable. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> there's, mm. Uh, the coming to see 
that I'm always waking up. My, I mean, I can't wake anybody up. People come to me that want to want me to make them wake up, and I can't make them. I can help them, and I have a lot of influence, enormous influence, but I can't make anybody do it. I used to have an AA sponsor who, you know, I asked him one time, well, you know, they don't know that they're really, um, so they, he, he wants to, to quit drinking. And he said, nah, he wants to want to quit drinking. <laughs> and he said, all we can do is help them when they really want it. He said, if we could make them want it, we'd be millionaires. <laughs> and that's the way this is, yep. is that I can't make you want it enough. I can make it to where if you want it, it becomes yeah, like exactly pouring a glass of water. Right? Exactly. Exactly. Yep. Yep. And that's also why you said that, you know, the, the perennial wisdoms go something like when the student is ready, the teaching appears. But then the other interesting aspect to that is that when the, when the, when the student goes through this gateless gate, this veilless veil, that then the, the student themselves becomes, you kind of made that funny reference where the teacher puts a, a golden star on the student's yeah, yeah, head, yeah, 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 which, yeah, is, yeah, yeah. which is so funny right. that oh, there's yeah. that, that process. And then, um, but then, yeah, the student in the self turns and says, okay, well now to sort of, you know, to, to now that I've recognized that diamond necklace around the neck, it's like now there's sort of a process of like becoming a, a, t a teacher as well to the, to those that are ready also to. And those who are drawn to it. To, who are drawn to it. And then there's one more um, sort of part of that perennial wisdom that's so fascinating, which is that the, at, cause as you know, um, the students teach you all the time as well. And so it's fascinating because that's why one of the perennial wisdoms is that the teaching is made with through the process itself. Mm -hmm. And and I think that that's also yeah, so I tell people it's very hard for me. I mean, the, it's very hard for me to get too confused because every couple of hours, one of you guys is going to pop in and straighten me out, right? I have <laughs> multiple sessions a day. So I, I can only get so confused in <laughs> so. sessions. <laughs> then I've got somebody coming in teaching me fresh stuff. And it's like, oh, I see. And it's... <clears throat> And, uh, you know, uh, people are paying me to keep me awake. <laughs> <laughs> it is a great racket. Yeah. Yeah. Tell. That's so funny. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the truth. So, yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a great way to, to also, I have play. a, I have a joke that, um, uh, that God decided when he, you know, when he looked down that, you know, so I'm going to go ahead and make that guy a teacher, but I can see this is a troublesome unit. So I think what we're going to have to do is we're not going to be able to wake him up once. We're going to have to wake up this one all the time, every three, four times, five times a day, whatever it is. So what are we going to do? So I'll make him a teacher and then students will come to him and they'll wake his ass up four or five times a day. <laughs> yep. 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 Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, that's the and that's the truth from the mouths of babes. Yeah. Yeah, the even the one one really good question there from my also even just brief experience with this even in the last just month that the when there's somebody there that is really truly like asking really good questions which is usually what oh, my, which is what my role has been yeah. for the last yeah, yeah, five yeah. years trying to get to this right. point right is that's and that's usually what the what the teachers tell me is that they say that i can tell that you by asking these really enthralling questions that you're getting that you're getting it that you that you're yeah. and, and so yeah. the, you're the, getting it and so and, and and the teaching is rising to another level in the face of skillful questions. Yes. Which is the same thing with non-dual inquiry. Is, is it just, because it, ultimately it's only, the only awakeness can inquire because yeah. there's nothing but awakeness. Yep, yep. But when we, when we actively inquire, consciously inquire as the awakeness, then it's completely different than actively inquiring as a Fred. 
right? Totally Trying agree. to find out the secrets of Fred. And what am I, what is, because, because well, I thought, well, well, I thought Ramana was telling me, what is Fred really? <laughs> yeah, I know. And that's the same, same thing with the, um, with the, with the, the Delphic maxim on the top of the temple of Apollo at Delphi that says, know thyself, yeah. because that's right. sort of in modernity, it's treated like the self-help thing, like with self-actualization. Yes. That's right. That's know, right. know thyself. Oh, okay, cool. Who is Atlas? What is Atlas going to build into That's the right. world? Yes, Ver yes. Yeah. yeah. Versus yes, the in versus the inward process. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yes. Yes. The um, there is there. If you go into any bookstore, there's a big self improvement section. I have you know if my books are there, they are in the in the self demolition. Yeah, section. <laughs> exactly, yeah. The unsubscribe, the unteaching <laughs> section. Yeah, right. exactly. The unteaching, yeah. the unspiritual teaching. The, yeah. It's <clears throat> because there's, you know, it would be fine to have um, what, what are the self actualization if there was a self here. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's always going to be yeah. a self. And if you were if you were doing it instead of it doing you. Instead of it doing you. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's it. Because that's what the, exactly that, which is that we all think that we contain consciousness. <laughs> it's right up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got to protect this unit because if this unit goes down, consciousness disappears. And um, but consciousness has got us. Yeah. Yeah, and it's consciousness that's really having the belly laugh right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's and that's who's always surprised by when awakening occurs. It's never the unit. It's never the character. Oh it's yeah, always, yeah, yeah. Always, exactly. Yeah, it's always yeah, oneness. Yeah. yeah, oneness is so surprised because in all of its grandeur and splendor, oneness just never even considered the idea that oneness looked like this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I know. And, I know. And I know that's a stretch, but if we look at it, I mean, the thing about oneness, the real tip off for me is that there is just one of them. Yep. So it, since there is just one of them, there's not room for a oneness and a Fred or oneness and an Atlas. Yeah. Yeah. So what comes to be surprised is not Fred and Atlas, which is what we had in mind. Is it not? Right. Yeah. I can't. Right. I can't wait to, for the shift. And yeah, yeah, um, yeah. but it's a whiteness that is surprised. And uh, because actually, if you look at it, I mean, it's a stretch to think that this is oneness. But since it's just one of them. Is there any possible way that this is not oneness? Yeah, like the it's a better question, like, like the fish that's 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 going where where is the ocean? Where is where is, where is, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? And then, yeah. and then and then and then once once there's sort of that oh and then it's like this relaxing right. and and expanding that happens and it's just yeah it's just so nice for the you got to be careful you can end up with some lazy fish that and that's <laughs> that's that's the, that's the middle path that's the middle way that's the the tantric path that's sahaja samadhi you you weave your enlightened realizations into the social fabric uh, you know that's this is the thing is that there's <clears throat> there's the like we like this is this is always these jokes that we make is that when you know when you know if you and I were here in the same room together and you you know you were to say that you know hey Atlas hand me the microphone right it's not like I'm gonna say that there is no Atlas oh there well there's no Atlas here there's no Atlas it. here right. and I'm not gonna walk on the street and just pretend like I, right. that, that that there's no cars that are yeah. going to be hidden. Right. and so and so there's like there's this in a sense it's like this middle path where there's like the sweet spot it's like the goldilocks zone in a sense and another way to think about it that that i've seen with this mountain analogy that, yeah. that's been really fascinating is when you get to the snow right the snow can be sort of like what you think is like enlightenment a little bit and the peak can uh -huh. be the absolute and whatnot but with that snow portion of enlightenment there's always if you've heard about the people that go up everest and whatnot there are all of these crevices 
and the crevices can be covered by the fresh snowfall and so you don't even know that it's there you step in and you've dropped 40 50 feet to your death or something right. and so the idea is that to sort of to know to sort of as you as as this sort of the the musical notes are being played is there's this like vigilance for these crevices where it's like yeah. there yeah it's not like i'm gonna just yeah uh, yeah go and you'll become a lazy fish as you said yeah yeah thomas thomas jefferson said that the price of freedom is eternal vigilance and i am in complete agreement interesting price because of freedom is eternal vigilance yeah right. yeah there has to it's it, this yeah. is all about vigilance and and that's and that's another sort of um uh, there <clears throat> there's like the self discipline community as well like Jocko Willink and um and um there's a there's another there's another one uh as well that has been making a sort of profound waves but they're sort of um, another way to describe what is being said with is, is discernment is discernment is, yeah, is discernment. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Is vig Absolutely. that eternal vigilance is just that yeah, discernment is and that's why it was called netty netty, you know, not this, not that, but yeah. it, it is this, it is that. And like, that's sort of like the closer and closer you get to that inevitable. So when somebody says, you know, well, maybe you should go and, you know, uh, get your, you know, go and, and get a loan and go and get the next car, go and get the next house, you know, and, and it's like, when you have discernment, you sort of recognize that, no, it's not, I'm not seeking externally for a happy object um, for, to make me happy. I, I'm, I actually already know that I am that eternal happy um, that is within and that, um, that, that, that the discernment is, is, is critical. And even with the whole unsubscriptions, um, aspect to it as well you can think about it with that that th that three pound uh arrogant um organ that um the, the the this the inputs that come into uh in in whether it be the the the, the drinks or the the food mm -hmm. or the information um if if we're watching the polarization propaganda uh that's going to be highly cancerous to um to any peace and to any happiness um and it, it has nothing the polarization propaganda has nothing to do with both and it has nothing to do with that philosophy at, or that understanding at all um it has only to do with i'm right and that they're wrong and that um and so the yeah there's just like i'm glad that we're sort of on on discernment here and that you know, it, well, the uh, lack of discernment, yeah. the lack of discernment is just astonishing. Yeah, it is. Right? I mean, it is. It's just there's so little actual discernment within spirituality. When you have lots and lots of followers who find something that they can follow and that does my discernment for me. And oh no. You put your you put that in somebody else's hands. You take your spirituality and put it in somebody else's hands. You're in trouble. You can find somebody else who can help you with it, but you know, but don't attempt to offload it. And that's what happens. Yeah, I got me a well. I have me a spiritual guy. Yeah, like I have a mechanic. I have a great mechanic, and I have, I have a great I have a great spiritual guy. I want to introduce you to, and it it's you can turn just turn over your spirituality to him he'll show you the truth then you'll have it you can go uh climb everest like it's a because if we're not careful enlightenment can become uh just an, another item on a bucket list yeah. for ego because the ego just wants to swim the amazon climb the you know the the uh, Him himalayas and wants to do this deep sea dive and do all this stuff and right there on the list somewhere there's going to be an enlightened enlightenment right and for many many people and these this is where i come in and i say many awaken but few clear yeah i've helped people i've helped a lot of people 
build up their bucket list, you know, I mean, achieve a, a notch on their bucket list, but it was never my intention to do that. That was not what I was after, but it was what they were after. And I can't, there's, and there's little I can do about that. The, <clears throat> and not, not anything I should do, because that's what we need at this point. How do we know that's what we've got, right? And there's, you know, you can argue with what is if you want to, but no, I can't. I no. can't recommend it. No, 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 no. Yeah. Fight, fighting against the the waves versus surfing on the crust. That's sort yeah. of the yeah, yeah. The analogy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. When when you say the awakened but not clear, it's in a sense a lot like what we were saying in the sort of analogy that we've been referencing throughout as well, which is that when the that egoic contracted drop recognizes it itself as the ocean and it, the ocean experiencing the waves that then that can be thought of as maybe there are these tastes these light bulbs have is flickered and then in, for it to sort of stay on in a sense the entire uh, observer and experience the witness and the experiencing process itself um is rejected as as a, as an appearance as an illusion as a dream as maya and that the uh, the only thing that is is no thing it's you know all all just indescribable ineffable um happening and that like this is that that sort of last um bit is what you could maybe say as clear um yeah that and we yeah. come to see we come to see this thing we get come to see through ever more subtle layers and <clears throat> the yeah which is what we're doing right now because yeah. <clears throat> I, I, I don't want to there are no rules to this thing so i'm not making rules folks but i'm just going to tell you from my experience which is pretty 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 bad um is that if you don't pursue this thing, you will lose it. Yeah. In other words, you can't really lose what you are, yep. but you sure think you did. You will experience that I had it and I lost it. And I spent 14 years in that predicament in between 2002, between 1992 and 2006. And it's a miserable place to be. And uh, I mean, I was awakened for five minutes and I wanted to rest on my laurels for the rest of my life. Yeah. Right. That, oh, 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 I've got it. Fred's got it now. But there's no one here to get it. Mm -hmm. There's there's getting it. And 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 there, there's this present verb of getting it. But there's no one here that's got it. And everybody is so interested in graduating from spirituality <laughs> that they don't want to go to school. <laughs> yeah and also to recognize that there isn't the, even the graduation process i'm sure you can say this is that there is no graduation that's exactly yeah, there's and, no graduation no yeah that, that there's no the moment that you that we in a sense um stop fanning the the fire um is the the moment that um maybe that there is a that a contraction can can come back or a layer of identity can in a sense come back i know that there's this that that there is this piercing of the veilless veil the gateless gate that 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 does when when that happens that uh, many people say that you there's no going back um that kind of a thing uh but there is also a going back if, yeah if there is not. there is you cannot unsee this thing but you can experience that you did you because because all you have to do is make it an object that the unit had fred fred woke up fred yeah something. now yeah. Yeah. you can go ahead and start treating me as an enlightened being if you'd like i mean yeah. which means which means <laughs> deference please and right, right. The grapes and, <laughs> yeah right exactly exactly yeah yeah that's what i was looking for you know i didn't get yeah, that yeah, I, was, yeah, yeah. I, was, I mean I, I was hot on the spiritual trail in the hopes that you know i could uh make some money and get some girls right and it's just oh, no. i wish it i wish it were less shallow 
but that's what that was that was a lot of my motivation uh, and it was a, a lot of my motivation for a long time and which is i mean of course it's just ridiculous yeah but these things do what they do yeah and you know and and the thing is is that it's all about the just like a a, a flower vase you can have a beautiful vase and that's nice or or you can have a tin can it's a really about the flowers it's not about the vase and this is a tin can if ever there was one but it's not about the tin can it's about the flowers yeah and the and 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 a whiteness has no pride you just as soon use an old tin can as a shiny new blown glass vase interesting so you in the francis lucille who was the uh, teacher of rupert spira yep. um francis has this great expression he calls it the eternal fireworks um mm -hmm. yeah. in the, of the happening yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. and it's yeah. interesting in what you just said fred you say that um rather than the you know this the the vase it's that the flower um yeah of it and right. and it's interesting because with the fireworks can be thought of as it's the, that that fireworks and not the cartridge that's that's the, the con of the that that gets that it gets sent and, up in and we got a bunch of vases and all the other vases have beautiful flowers too and they're looking at this vase and and they're you know the at the, the central and they're thinking god what beautiful flowers yeah. how can i get there yeah yeah exactly how can i change yeah. myself into becoming beautiful flowers yeah and they're already beautiful flowers there are already a dozen beautiful flowers looking That's at it. your beautiful flowers saying that That's well right. how can i get some of those beautiful flowers right. yeah right yeah. you're already a gorgeous firework looking at another gorgeous firework wondering how can i be a gorgeous firework? How can i well, boy how can i make noise and color like that right yeah yeah how can i how can i really charm people like that or whatever and it's like well you know the, when i when i when i said told you i wanted to try to stop teaching because it, when i went to see aja and i was awake when i got there but I wasn't, but I'm, but the clarity then was nothing like it is. Yeah. Yep. And the, what happened was I wanted to, I didn't want to teach because I couldn't figure out how I answered all those questions. Right. I mean, it looked to me like the most stressful job in the world because somebody <laughs> lob a question at him, yeah. you know, you, in my own mind, I'd be having to go, well, let me think about that a little bit. What can I put together to, to answer this question successfully or whatever? It never dawned on me that it wasn't Aja answering, that it was, it was certainly yeah. coming through Aja Ness. Exactly. Yeah. But it's the thing itself. It's just, yes. I sometimes say this is like a Pillsbury Doughboy. You poke it in the stomach and words come out. <laughs> 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 that's the same thing with this you yeah you push it in the stomach and words come out yeah and yep. but it had nothing to do but but this unit had nothing to do with the formulation yeah of those words except for that that there's because the body but the bodies themselves are conditioning so that conditioning is gonna influence what comes out like i'm telling you the truth, the greatest truth that I can, but at the very best, it's the straight truth plus the Fred spin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, can't, they can't not be Fred spin on it because it's coming through this unit and there's conditioning there yep. that affects it. And that can be, that can conditioning is, uh, we, we, these bodies want to get rid of all their conditioning, but better watch what you want there because yeah. The body's our conditioning itself. And if you succeed in get rid of, uh, getting rid of all your conditioning, then the unit will pass. The unit will die. Because the unit itself is conditioning. And yeah. it's, yeah. yeah. But it feels like I've got to get rid of all my conditioning. I've been told that. They tell me I've got to get rid of all my attachments. Good luck. The layers, the layers are the unique prism that the source light is, is refracted through. And it, although it does help to undergo a 
process of getting to those roots of, of the monkey mind to be able to create a, a longer gap, be less mm -hmm. reactive with the longer gap is really what also helps with that discernment that we were talking about mm -hmm. earlier. And to sort of have like, I really appreciate how you said a little bit ago that there is more and more an eternal amount of layers of, of subtlety and clarity to, mm -hmm. to this. Those are, I, you know, I've had, I have people, it didn't used to happen in early, my early practice teaching practice, because I just don't think there was like an attractive enough clarity over here. I mean, I don't, I really don't. Um, but now I regularly have people who, I mean, uh, it's not every day, but I mean, it's regularly uh, people like anywhere in the world who was walking down the street one day and boom, right? And they're just, the, the, the a whiteness unveiled itself. And, exactly. And exactly. they were just, and they were never seekers, never looking to be seekers, never thinking about being seekers. And boom, awakening occurred and uh, they got a full dose of whatever the hell this is. Yep. And, but yep. there's no clarity there and there can be a lot of confusion. And there can be there can be enough confusing that you people find a way to suffer through anything, and um, so you know you can even suffer with that I'm sure. But the clarity that comes after it, it's there's a difference between understanding, which this can't be understood, and the understanding, which is with a capital U. Mm -hmm. I don't know of a better name word for it, but it, even though it's not understanding, but there isn't there. We know there is an understanding here. Yeah. I can tell from talking to you that you were part of this understanding. Yeah. Right. And because you, you can't, you know, somebody, I walk into a room and somebody just stays silent. I might judge them as well. Wow, that's quite the awakened being over there. And, uh, but if they come in and they start talking, I'll know. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. As long as you got your mouth shut, you're a mystery. You open your mouth and start talking, there's no more mystery. And it doesn't take much. Yeah, yep. And it's that's why the, you can say it's a, it's like a surgical precision that has to be uh, you, with the with the discernment of the logos of the words uh, in order for that uh, judgment of the miss of what was the mystery in silence to be of uh, oh they have closer to the capital U uh, understanding yeah yeah so there is in my teaching I use the word precision a lot because and I talk about the that that I mean, I used, years ago, I mean, I was a poet before I was a mystic. I was already a mystic and didn't know it. I thought it was a poet. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a great love of precision in language here yes, because yes, of those years yes. as a poet. And, <clears throat> you know, you just, you can sit there and agonize over what, what do, I, do I want to say and or for, I mean, whatever yep. or whatever it is. You agonize over even some stuff. And the precision of the language, language will not get you there, but it can get you so close mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. if you're just willing to just, just step over. I mean, when I first started talking, I used to get a lot of explosive awakenings. And that's because people used, to, I, I, I couldn't get you all that close. I could get you pretty close to awakening. And, but you still had to leap off the mountain in order to get to the, other mountain but now there's a bridge you just get to the top of this mountain you walk right on over to the other one there's not much of a leap you have to take there's not that sudden jarring change of state which is huh, because you're coming when you're talking with Matt with me you're seeing it very 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 slowly and easily and slowly and easily and slowly and easily and then that momentum builds but it used to be so and then as a result of that I had fewer and fewer explosive awakenings almost none anymore because it's just it's not as it doesn't there's not that same shock because i know i'm working with awakeness i mean i will i will have people notice the sense of being prior to a session 
because I'm putting myself on notice over there. Okay, I'm here <laughs> and the jig is up. <laughs> right? A whiteness comes to a whiteness. A whiteness has no resistance to a whiteness. But a whiteness that thinks it's a Fred Davis, only so helpful. As you mentioned a couple of times as well, there's a one of the best ways, as you said, with Nisargatas and Maharaj as well, is that the just sitting in the presence is already like a vortex in a sense. And so in, in a sense, we could say that at the top of that mountain is that uh, as we in the layers of subtlety and clarity, um, there's more and more of a vortex that comes in the sense of pulling the these in in pursuit of that mountaintop up with and that that's also been something that's it's like the quality we mentioned this as well the quality of your life in many ways is the quality of your questions and that if if we're willing to ask these questions of what is i what is my source we're willing to be honest with ourselves and few of us are and I was not particularly known, noted for honesty in my life, but uh, but now there's a there's a sort of rigorous honesty over here, at least in this in at least in this one area, where I can tell I I can't tell myself I'm not myself. I can't tell myself I'm not this. I can't tell I, I can't you know the if from a Fred's point of eye point of view I could introduce. Fred to this very scene, and it will just suck out loud because it'd be coming for it'd be Fred's eyes view of the world, and the world is never going to be the way that Fred thinks it should be. But from this point of view, when I change where I'm looking from, and now I'm looking for the eyes of white of awakeness, where there's no actual point of view, there's just view or just viewing, then I can't find a problem here. I can't find anything broken or out of place or missing, nothing. Yep. Seems to be, actually, there appears to just be what is and what is, it feels to me like it, there's, it can only be as it is. Yes, yes. And that's why the Rinzai Zen had the, the question of what at this moment is lacking. Yes, that's it. That's right. Yeah, what at this moment is lacking? Absolutely nothing. 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 Yeah. Fred, this has been such an honor and a pleasure. Oh, I've really enjoyed it. You've, um, you, 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 you're the quality of your questions has been really, really excellent, and and, and the quality uh, of your, how do I put that? But tennis playing dialectic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The quality of your tennis playing. Thank you for bailing me out of that. <laughs> the quality of your tennis play, playing is very high and i've really enjoyed uh going back and forth it really is it's just what could be better yeah like you said that that's the second one the first one is is uh, there's nothing to sit, talk about and the second one is the coolest thing is to get as close as we can with symbols to, to that's yeah. Right. yeah that's it yeah that was a great point <laughs> well thank you very much for having me and yeah. uh, i'm tickled to death me too. Um, yeah. <laughs> Tickled to death. <laughs> That's another good one. <laughs> yeah, I've been I've been taking the, un, the unborn is tickled to death. <laughs> yeah. 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 Go, go, go figure. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Um I've been yeah, I've been taking so many uh great notes of reference throughout the convo and um <clears throat> and that's been a great reference point throughout the animating presence the awakeness both and the dream analogy metaphysical anarchy but not having it become a personality teaching the the non-duality of the beach with the duality of the mountain that was a really really good one the veilless veil the gateless gate <laughs> yeah yeah um and the net and sense of being and I'll, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to exploring more together. Um, 
where are you, where are you based? I'm in South Carolina. Perfect. South Carolina. Cool. Uh, we're in Los Angeles. The, the, the very center of the non-dual universe. Of the non, exactly. Yeah, that's right. South <laughs> Carolina, that's where it's at. Cool. Yeah, hopefully um, once things settle a bit closer to maybe the summer and whatnot, it would be awesome to be able to do one of these in person and yeah. another round. Yeah, you're, you're really That'd be great. We really, really appreciate you a lot, Fred. And thank and, you. And also for, for all of those that watched we love you so much thank you for watching thank you for yeah. tuning in we are super yeah. appreciative we would yeah. we, we would love to hear how you feel about the the tennis uh and what fred was teaching us about on the in the comments below come play tennis come play tennis yeah exactly and let us uh we would love to we would love to hear from you so let us know and then also like the video if it brought you value subscribe if you haven't share the video with other people as well and also check out the links in the bio below the awakening clarity now.com is down there also fred's author page on amazon with all of his books you can check those out as well as his youtube channel go and subscribe to him and check out his videos they're excellent and i think fred mentioned throughout the interview as well that he's doing the um, the, the smaller groups. Uh, yeah, I'm doing small groups and I'm doing, I still do satsang every Sunday. Everybody is welcome to that. I got an email this morning, morning that was addressed to Betsy and he just said, how do I meet Fred? And, and I wrote him that, so come to satsang. And it's, it, uh, there, it, there's still, I'm very actively teaching and I'm a, teaching every day. And so uh, I'm just not doing exactly the same thing as a modus operandi in, to help people wake up. I have, I have new ways that are simply more efficient. Yeah, yep. and, and they're less taxing on this old unit. Yep, yeah, yeah, exactly. And, I've, and I've had all, I've really had about all the hand-to-hand -hand combat that I'm looking for with egos, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. The wisdom of that. And then also the wisdom of the, the internet with the ability to go one to many um yeah as right. well which is really profound so yeah it is it's beautiful yeah thank you again so so much fred thank you Super thank you grateful. it was my great pleasure thank and you I'll, thank you thank uh, you i'll see you when i see you thank you and thanks everybody for tuning in we love you so much thank you and much love we will see you soon peace everyone Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.